What's going on guys? Got an AC unit we're working on today. Got the old Supco umbrella out. Got the recovery set up. We're going to be uh, recovering all the refrigerant out of this condenser here. And then we're going to go inside, replace the uh, evaporator coil. It's leaking. And we're also changing out the condenser. The compressor is screaming. So I guess the people here in this first apartment at night they can't sleep their bedroom windows right by the unit the compressor screeching real loud and uh, the, the compressor is about 700 bucks and I got a whole new condenser for 775 so for $75 more <clears throat> I'll buy a brand new unit with a warranty and I'll just scrap some parts off this for the rest of the units on property but anyway um, I'm gonna cut to a little video of the noise the compressors making uh, which will be right about now Okay, so that was the noise it was making, so you see why we're changing it out. And we're going to go ahead and get ready to start the recovery process. I have the indoor fan on right now to help uh, with the recovery process. So now we're going to go ahead and we'll open up our valves. And we'll turn the recovery machine on. And we got the, all the lines are bled. Valves are open. We're all set up. I got the valve cores out. Right there, both Appions. So we're all good to go. Should be a pretty quick recovery. We're at 27 pounds and about five and a half ounces. So we'll see how much is in here. When I started, it was at 27 pounds and I think two ounces or two and a half ounces. So we'll see how much refrigerant was in here. All right, we'll let this recover. And we'll be back shortly. got everything recovered and it looks like here's our numbers started out the recovery tank here weighed 27 pounds two ounces and at the end of our recovery we got 32 pounds and five ounces now we're gonna go inside and get ready to start uh, pulling apart the air handler so we can get the coil out all right guys we're inside at the indoor unit Got everything off. Now we're just gonna pull the disconnect out. And all I'm gonna do is pull the screws out of the front of the cover here. And we'll start taking the screws off here and down here. That way we can get ready to pull the coil out. So let me get these screws out. We'll be right back. All right guys, we've got all the screws out. Now the next thing you wanna do is grab this little cover, slide it up out. We'll save that for the new coil, which I already got it out of the package here. And look at that, a brand new coil. Kind of smashed there, there. Brand new, just pulled it out of the box like that. Make sure we got pressure in there. It's a good sign. All right. So now what I'm going to do, I got this unhooked. I'm just going to get my little rigid pipe cutter and I just cut right above here and then we'll get ready to pull the coil out. So this is how I like to do it. Works for me. So if you guys want to unsweat this here, more power to you. I'd rather just cut it. And then when I get the new coil in, Line it up where it needs to be, and I'll swage it out and just drop it in after I clean it up. 
One last time, I'll have to have the torch going inside someone's apartment. Got the old piston right there. I believe it's a uh, 57. Look at the oil. So definitely gonna have to do nitrogen blowout on this one. Might have to flush the lines. So, all right, let me get the coil ready to pull out. Okay, now we'll get ready to clean up the pipe here. Got some sanding paper. We'll sand that all up. And then after that, uh, I got my drill and uh, spin swage. So we'll go ahead and we'll swage out the copper on the coil, the 5 8 That'll give us our swage. So we'll let the uh, nitrogen out of here and we'll cut the cap off and then we'll re-swage it and we'll pull this line off. So let me get this all sanded up here. All right, now we'll get our swage bit out. Get the 5 8 Okay, that's the one we're going to want for the drill. Going to remove the valve core. Slowly, because the nitrogen is going to come out once I start releasing this. valve core. We'll set that aside because after we're done brazing we'll put that back in. We'll put a cap on there. Okay there's our old cap. Got our drill and our 5 8 swage bit. And these are required to have, I think, 2000 RPMs on your drill. And this one, of course, 2000. So, start it on two. Okay, now we'll go ahead and swage this out. And you got to watch this to get really hot. So, let me grab a rag to hold this. Okay. You don't want to touch that end when it's done, let it cool off. Just like that. Got a nice swage. And then we'll go ahead and take the nut off there where the piston is. piston in there so we're going to go ahead and take this out because this is a two ton condenser we're putting in which requires a number 57 piston and I believe these come with a 51 or 52 I can't remember it's for the one and a half ton so let's see if I can get it to drop out Yep, 51. So we're not going to use that in this application. So when we bring the condenser down, uh, we'll get the piston off there and we'll put it in here. Okay, now we're getting ready to put the new coil in. So keep it close to the bracket it goes in. Just work it down. Just got to be careful you don't damage the coil. 
goes. You want to make sure it's down far enough that your screws, the screw hole on the front of there lines up with that one. So you definitely want to be in the track here. All right, guys, now we're outside here. We're getting ready to hook up the nitrogen. We're gonna do a little blowout on the line set here before uh, we braze in the indoor coil. Got a little music playing over there, okay. All right, so now I already cracked open both these caps, so get them off. service wrench we're going to go ahead and we're going to close both service valves that way while we're doing our blowout it's just a line set only and I have the lines opened on the inside at the indoor unit so it's not connected and my my man's going inside with a little bucket here in a minute and he's going to catch anything that blows out so let me get these shut all the way so we're just doing the line set Okay, we got the nitrogen open and we're getting low. We got about a little over 700 pounds left. But I got two smaller bottles up the shop if need be. So I'm gonna start opening the regulator here, letting some pressure go through here. Okay, now we got it over to the liquid line. We already did the suction side. Just gonna slowly ease this on. Gonna run about 100 psi through. Okay, we're getting ready to braze on the inside. Got the new nitrogen tank here, 2,300 pounds in there. Got the little nitro view thing hooked up, hooked up to the suction line. Now we'll go ahead and turn this on just around three to five here, so we can braze. So we'll just watch the little orange ball. Just want it lifted just off the bottom there. A little hard to tell, but. Okay, right there's where we want it. Now we'll go inside and get the torches ready and raise up the uh, suction line on the inside. All right, guys, we're getting ready to braise it up. We got the nitrogen flowing through. Uh, get ready to light the torch, and we'll braise up the suction line there. All right, guys, we got it all brazed up. I'm about to put the uh, Schrader core back in right here, and we'll go out and uh, turn the nitrogen up, do a pressure test on the coil, and if that holds, uh, we'll go ahead and take out the uh, condenser and start on that next. Okay, guys, I've got 160 PSI of nitrogen in the system. Grab our big blue.
All right, looks pretty good. Put our cap back on the uh, Schrader core. Let this uh, 160 PSI hold here for a little while. Gonna get ready to go to lunch. Okay, we're back from lunch and still holding right at 160. So I'm gonna go ahead and release the nitrogen and then go inside, put the uh, 057 piston inside. That's for the two ton unit. Button up the inside, then we'll come out here and we'll unhook the outdoor condenser here and get this old one out of here and get ready for the new one. All right, guys, we got the line all insulated, got the correct piston put in. Now I'm just getting ready to throw the cover on. Also went ahead and changed the cap. Since we're here doing all this work, might as well go ahead and put a new cap in there. All right, guys, we're going to start unhooking the uh, condenser out here. Going to undo the electrical, and we're just going to cut back the lines here. And then we'll get everything prepped, get ready for the uh, new unit to come in. All right, we got the cover off. Now we're getting ready to unhook the wiring. Go ahead and break this nut loose. Okay, got the whip out. Do the low voltage. What's going on here? There we go. Okay, we got the old one out. I'm getting ready to bring the new one over. Got the pad all sweeped off. So we'll get this one set in and uh, get ready to brace up the lines. The new unit in place, got all the tools set up. I'll come over here, we'll pop the caps off, get the valve cores out. It's a 410 unit and of course it's pre-charged so we got the um, valves here are turned down that way all the refrigerants in the compressor. So now we're going to hook up our uh, Schrader core tools, pull the Schraders out, and then we're gonna do the brazing on the lines here, and we'll do a pressure test, then we'll pull a vacuum, and if we're all good to go, we'll release the refrigerant, and then we'll check our charge, get it dialed in. Okay, now we'll do the low voltage. Sure your connectors are nice and snug. Don't need any kind of arcing or any problems in there. So we've got all the electrical hooked up. Now we're just gonna get the nitrogen set up here and we'll get ready to braze. Okay, we're getting ready to braze it up. Got the nitrogen flowing. 
spark the torch up and we'll go ahead and do the suction line. Then we'll move, uh, cool it off and we'll move the hose from the nitrogen over to this side and then we'll wrap up that service valve right there next and then we'll do the small one. Okay, we got everything brazed up. Both lines. And we got 175 PSI nitrogen in the system. It's been holding. Spray a little bit of big blue around here just to double check. Okay, while well this uh, holds here for a little bit, I'm gonna try to clean some things up and get ready to set up my vacuum. All right, it's been about a half hour and we're still holding around 175. So I'm gonna go ahead and release the nitrogen and get ready to set her up in a vacuum. Okay, we got the system in the vacuum. I'm gonna start cleaning, uh, cleaning up all my stuff here to get ready to go home. Close the valves a second, then reopen them, just in case there's a little bit of air inside the valves there, I'm going to get those out. So we're going to pull this down into a real deep vacuum and release the charge and we'll hook up the manifold gauges and we'll see where we're at on our superheat. So I'm going to get everything cleaned up while this runs in a vacuum. Okay guys, we're down to 170 microns. I already pulled it down to 190 the first time. Uh, broke the vacuum with nitrogen and pulled it down again. This time we're at 170. So I'm gonna go ahead and close off the valves. And I'm gonna let this stand here for about 10 minutes or so and we'll see how much the uh, micron gauge rises up. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut the pump off. We'll see if we're ready to release the refrigerant. Alright guys, we only went up to 240, so I think we're good. I'm gonna pop the caps off here and release the refrigerant. Then we'll fire it up and we'll see where we're at. Dial in our superheat. So let me get these caps off and release the refrigerant. Fire this up. Okay, we're gonna release the high side first. Okay, we got the high side open. Now we'll go ahead and open the low side. All right guys, we got all the refrigerant released. Getting ready to put two new valve cores in here. And I'm going to go inside and turn the thermostat on, call for cooling, and check the charge. Okay, guys, we're inside. The unit's been running for a good 20 minutes. It's 84 in here, and I have it set at 78. So let's uh, take a look at the wet bulb. We'll go outside and get our outdoor temperature and our target superheat. Okay guys, according to our target superheat here, um, we need to be at a 19 and right now we're running at a 38. So I'm going to go ahead, I already got everything, all the lines bled, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of charge. Get us down to 19 degrees superheat. We'll call this one good. Okay, it looks like we're good on this one. Um, there's our superheat. We're at a 17.8, roughly 18, and our target was a 20. Uh, sub coolant's right at 10. So all the pressures and numbers look good to me. Um, inside, we got 84 degrees, so there's a pretty big load on the house right now until it brings it down. So thanks for watching. Comment like, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.